Welcome to Scasella Vision. Today's project we are doing is the Art Felt Tonal Pillow. If you have purchased the kit, what you will have found in your kit are two pieces of paper that are approximately 21 by 21 inches. This is the Art Felt paper, so you don't want to throw this away. This is what you're going to be building your pillows on. You also should have a full hank of uh, a multicolored roving, another full hank of a solid colored roving, and a little twist of some yarn and two felting needles, two barred needles. This should all have come in your kit. A couple of extra things that you'll need is some plastic for the final felting process and if you happen to have one of these little doodads, this one is uh, made by Clover, it actually has five felting needles in it. And although it's not a necessary item to have, it can speed up your felting process um, just a little bit. Even though you're not felting it with the needles, you're tacking it into the paper, it can make it a little bit quicker when you have these five needles doing your work versus one or two needles. So let's go ahead and get started. Before you start, you want to make sure that you have a working surface that is porous that the barbed needles can go into. If you notice here, our material if when we tack it in, the barb needle actually goes into the material and um, you're going to want to make sure that you can use the barbs. They come all the way up to about here, if you can see that. So you want your tacking material to be at least this thick. What we use is our tack boards and we actually sell them under the Art Felt name. It's actually a material that heals itself, so it will last a long time when it comes to using the art felt process. You can also use uh, some kind of a styrofoam or something. If you notice when you're doing the tacking process that little bits of the foam are coming into your piece, you're going to want to cover that foam with a piece of um, saran wrap or something so that you don't get the little pieces coming in. And that's one of the nice things about our, our tack boards is that you will never have little pieces of foam in your materials. To begin with, we're going to set the yarn aside. We don't need that as of yet. We have two squares of paper, so we can make either two pillow fronts or we can make a pillow front and a pillow back. In this tutorial, we are basically going to show you how to make one pillow front, and if you choose, you can make an identical one like it for the back, or you can make another one like it and have two pillows and create your own backing. I like to use old shirts for the backing. Um, I use large men's shirts. They have the buttons down the middle and it makes for a really nice backing. So I'm going to set one of these pieces of paper aside and we're going to start with just one piece of paper. Now since we have enough for two of everything we're going to have to split our roving too. So we're going to take it apart. It should be in a hank and we're going to take it and find the middle of it which is right here. And rather than uh, cutting it, we're going to pull it apart because the ends will be easier to draft out then. Now, if I have my hands together, I can't pull it apart no matter how hard I try. And that is because the fibers are too long. If I spread my hands apart and then give it a tug, it'll come apart really nice and easily. And see these little wispy ends? These are really great for drafting out the roving. So I'm going to separate, put one there, put one here. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to find the middle and separate my hands a little bit, give it a little tug, and then I have two ends approximately the same. And I'm going to put one to the side. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a base, and this is going to end up being on the inside of the pillow. This is uh, being put into place to actually hold the pretty colors on top. When we put down a base coat, we always want to make sure that we have fibers going in both directions, in a vertical direction and in a horizontal direction, so that the fibers overlap like this. This way, it's called cross-hatching, and number one, cross-hatching makes the fibers nice and strong, and number two, it will make it shrink evenly. If I laid all my fibers in one direction, the actual piece would shrink in that direction. So if I lay them all horizontally, 
my piece would shrink horizontally and I'll end up with a rectangle instead of a square. If I lay half my fibers horizontally, half vertically, then it will shrink as a square. So you will see what I mean as I do this now. I'm going to start by laying all my fibers um, vertically, at least they're vertical against me. And as you can see, I'm just using my fist, I'm using all my, my fingers here, and I actually grab just the ends and I pull them out. This is called drafting, drafting the roving. Um, as you can see, the roving that we use is very nicely combed. Um, you would actually want to call this tops, or in English they call it sliver, and uh, it creates very, very nice, very fine coat of roving on my paper. Um, since I'm going to be putting two down, I probably should have divided this in half too, so I would know how much to use in one direction and how much to use in the other. Um, and since I've done this quite a few times, I'm not going to do that. Uh, there we go. I'll just take it all the way to the end. Edges. You can take it all the way to the edge of the paper, so. Um, this up here looks a little bit finer, so I'm just going to add just a tad bit in here before I move on. And here's a little bit of a hole. There we go. Now I'm going to use the rest of it to go in the other direction. This is all going vertically. Now I'm going to draft it out, and I'm going to put it down horizontally. So what this is going to do, it's called cross-hatching, and it will give me a really nice uh, base coat to work with that I know my piece will hold together very well. And because I've got it going both directions, it will shrink evenly on all sides. So there we go, and I've almost got it all down. As you can see, this does not take all that long. Um, I'm going to finish off on this side here. And so I've pretty much covered the entire piece, and I'm going to see, I see a couple of white areas here, so I'm going to make it a little thicker in those areas. And um, I'm also going to Take it a little more to the edge there. Here's a little area that's a little finer. Um, because I'm going to go ahead and I want to use this whole, this whole section. Um, because I know this is just the right amount for me, for my piece. There we go. All right. Once I have it all layered down, There go. I'm going to tack it in. I'm going to use one of the tacky needles, um, barb needles that you that you would have gotten in your kit, and I'm just going to go ahead and you know tack it in about once every inch. I don't need to tack this in a lot. The whole point is for the paper to keep it in place. And as you can see, I'm going about one every couple of inches or every inch. It's sort of hard to tell. A better way to see what it looks like is I can take it and flip it over and here you can see where I've tacked it in because the roving is coming through to the other side and that means it's being held on the paper. As you can see when I pull it up it doesn't fall off and that's what I want. So I'm going to continue. I know sometimes I just use two needles This wasn't tacked down when I flipped it, um, but actually one needle goes pretty darn quick. Yep. And as long as it's down, and I can pick it up, such as like this, and notice none of it comes out. You can see there's really not a lot of tacking going on there. And I can turn it back to this side, and I know it's all down. I'm ready to go. If you have one of these little guys, 
you can use these too just to tack it in. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, it, what it does is it, it produces five little tacks, as you can see right here, five, 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 five versus the one. Um, so it just makes it a little sturdier, but it's really not necessary at all. Now comes the fun part. We get to actually do some sort of a design on our pillow. So we have all these different colors here. Um, we've got a little bit of brown, a little bit of teal, uh, a little bit of red, and what we want to do is blend these colors into our piece. So what I'm going to do is start, oops, got a little bit of a beige that clumped up there. I, I'm going to start with the brown. Now my last layer we did horizontally, so this layer I'm actually going to go vertically. And um, uh, there's not all that much brown on this one, so I'm actually, so that I have a little bit more solid brown, I'm going to go ahead and use that brown and cross hatch right away. I laid it in one direction and now I'm laying it in the other direction. So this is, is you know, a little bit of brown that I'm probably going to have on this piece. I've got a little bit more here, so we can do another patch somewhere. And then I'm going to continue keeping the cream there a little bit, and now I've got some blue coming out. So um, what I can do is I can just sort of let the blue sort of blend in from the white, and and I'm going to cross hatch. I'm going to go across in this direction with the blue and make it a little bit bluish there. Um, I am going to tack some of this in as I go along. I can see what I'm doing better. Got a little bit of red showing through here, and that would actually be okay. Um, we have that background down for a reason. And if a little bit of it shows through, it'll be just fine. And the background actually matches the red in here, so it'll work nicely. I'm going to continue with this blue here. And this blue, once more, goes right into a cream. And I'm going to take it around the corner here a little bit. Um, there we go. And then I'm going to take some of this cream lay it over here because we haven't put anything in that corner yet. And I'm going to actually cross hatch with the cream as I go along. There we go. It's all cross hatched. This is here. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to have it go down a little bit like this. Got some brown coming in here. I'm going to take a little bit of the brown and Bring it in this direction. Now this is all cross hatched, so I'm going to go ahead and get it tacked in. This way I know what areas are cross hatched and which ones are not. Helps me out a little bit. So still have some brown here, so I'm going to actually take it down this edge. Uh, I'm getting a little staticky. That happens every once in a while. Uh, I'm going to actually put a little bit of red here. Um, put that there. Let's touch it a little bit. And I still have more blue coming in here too. Hatch that a little with the blue. Now, when I look at this as a whole, I'm not liking this, this little brown streak in here. So I'm going to soften it up by using some of this that's still a little there. Um, it just makes it look a little bit softer as it goes along. Same thing here, the color transitions. Um, just a little softness to make it not quite as boom. There we go. You can actually.
actually do a little there too. Now at this point, since we're just doing very little bit to a um, uh, little accent to make things look smooth and so on, you don't need to worry too much about direction. You just want to sort of put it so you like the way it looks. And you've got to consider once it's wet, it's going to look slightly different. And once it's felt, it's going to look slightly different. So we've got a little bit of blue going on, a little bit of red. Um, I'm just going to lightly pull this blue. We've got a lot of blue here, and that's okay. We like that. Now we've got a little bit of red in here still that we could use. So since I want to pull it out in little strands, there we go, I'm going to start like this and uh, oop, a little twisted there, a little there, uh, smooth it out a little bit once more. Mm. Let's see, I think I'm going to add a little reddish tone over here, because once more I think the, the brown over here is looking a little stark, so I'm going to just add a little bit to the edges to soften it. And I think my corner over here is a little, a little too white, too. So I'm going to put a little in here. That will soften it as well. Makes it not quite as stark, yet it still looks white. Now I'm sitting here using almost all of this, and I don't really need to. Um, I just like to play with it until I like the way it looks. And uh, I'm thinking this blue section here could use just a little bit of a little bit of red popping out. And I'm thinking I like the way it looks. So now I'm going to call it quits. And now I just need to finish tacking it all in. Unfortunately, you can tell when something's been tacked in. It, it's not quite as fluffy anymore. I'm going to use this a little bit just because it'll go a little quicker. now that I've got it packed in, that it looks slightly different than it did before. So, now I've got my, my basics of the pillow done. Now it's time to use a little of the yarn that comes with it. And this is going to give us our pattern on top. Now you should have different colors that all coordinate with the actual pillow that you have. Um, a, there's quite a few strands in here. There's probably like two per color or something. And you can put it on however you want. I mean, you could actually do yourself a checkerboard or something if you wanted to. Um, I happen to be a big swirl person, so I tend to do a lot of swirls. And um, the stuff is a little hard to tack in. It doesn't have to be tacked in. You could actually just lay it on top and it, it will felt in. Um, but I like to tack it in. Now, oops, I am using my multi one because if I use this one, I can do it. It's a little bit harder. I have to tack it exactly on the yarn and that's a little bit easier to do with the multi pronged one, but I can certainly do it like this and sometimes if I hold two needles, and I even have a better shot. There we go. So I'm going to do another little swirl in 
this direction. Don't worry about it being too even. When it um, felts in, it's going to have a little bit of jagged edges anyways. So, I think we'll take this like that and then just take it off the end and uh, It doesn't stay in all the way, and like I said, don't worry about that. This is just to hold it in place temporarily. There we go. I'm probably getting my head in the video. There we go. Okay. And I think we're going to take one on this side here, and um, the white color. So maybe we'll start here and go here. There we go. And. thing is, is whether this is tacked together or not, it should felt pretty good because this is 100% wool and so is this. And as a matter of fact, the yarn that we are tacking in here is from the same company that provides us with the roving, which is shovel. Two, I can take another little piece, do a little swirl down here or maybe over there. This um, does tear very easily, so I can actually maybe just have one more here. Since I did one on that side, we're going to put a little one here to balance it. That one was blue, so we'll take a little piece of the red. And just do one little loop like that. Okay. So now I have my finished piece and my next step is going to be to get it wet and get it ready to felt. Okay, so I just happen to have a piece of plastic that's just the right size. It's half of a 33 gallon trash bag. So I am going to take my piece and I'm just going to be careful as I move it. I'm going to move it off to the side. And I'm going to put my bag down on my counter, my plastic, there we go. And then I'm going to move this right back onto it like this. And I'm going to make sure, this is the side that I'm going to start my rolling at, that I have a little bit of extra here. I need some extra on the sides and I need some extra on the end and I have all that. Now I need to get it wet. There's several different ways to get things wet and in this case your best way is going to be just by spraying it. Um, we have many different ways that you can do it, and each project we, we show different ways. So, but on this one, I'm just going to use this handy landy little ace sprayer. And um, it is, it's about 10 bucks or something at ace. It's meant for, you know, your garden to put pesticides in or something. Now, of course, we don't want pesticides. So make sure that if you're going to use this for your felting, that you don't use pesticides. Um, 
in your sprayer and then use it on your filter. You don't want to do that. Not a good idea. So, especially because all these rovings that come from Shuffle, um, you know, the, the chemicals, uh, there's absolutely no residue whatsoever when he's done producing them. So they're actually safe if you want to felt your, your dog toys or make your baby something that it chews on or something like that. His, his rovings are, are very safe for that. So. so I'm sitting here wetting it down. As you can see, sometimes the water sort of puddles before it finally gets absorbed, and that's okay. Um, I mean, you can see it sort of deflates as more and more water gets on it. And I do want to make sure that it's really, really nice and wet. And sometimes having the plastic on top is a better way to do it. But I'm going to show you a little trick. And then you can make sure that everything is super wet. The key to felting. You need to have a natural fiber, and you need to have water, and you need to have agitation. Anything else is just extra. So heat, not necessary, although it helps. Soap, not necessary. It can help. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, that people think you have to have, and you really don't. As long as you have a natural fiber from an animal, and you have water, and you have agitation, you're good. That's why we do our felting in the dryer because this way we don't have to do an awful lot of work. Um, we let the dryer do the work for us. If you're a wet felter or you've done wet felting before, you know what would be in store for you now. So, but since this is not wet felted, you don't have to do anything about it. So we've got pretty much the piece wet. When I press down here, I'm going to see what this part looks like. And um, if I press down and it just really adheres, and it does in this case, we're, we're usually pretty good to go. Um, this, I like to, when I roll my pieces so that I don't get a kinked edge, I put a little rag on the inside. Um, unfortunately, this piece here didn't quite get long enough so that my rag would be covered. So I'm actually going to take my rag. You don't want your rag actually to touch the edges of your work, okay? Um, so I'm going to actually just take my rag and wrap it in plastic. And it just doesn't fit the whole length, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that when I start rolling it, I have something to balance it on. And I'm going to roll up my piece. And it looks like this is all very, very wet, which is a good thing. Um, as I go along, I'm going to spray it a little more. It really needs to be wet. You don't want it to be dry in any which way or form. So if you have water dripping out of your roll when you're done, you've done your dog well. So this way, with us spraying it from the top and rolling it this way, we actually will keep our little design in place. And then we've got it all worked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to knead it just a little bit because I want to make sure that everything is wet. And if it's nice and doughy and squishy, then I know it's all nice and wet, and it is. So then what I'm going to do is I need to put it in the dryer, and we need it to stay in the shape in the dryer. So usually what I do is I put it in a trouser sock. And, of course, I have trouser socks here. <laughs> if you don't have trouser socks, take an old pair of hose or um, fishnets or whatever you have and just cut off the body part. Um, these work really, really great. You just hold the bottom and then pull your, your sock over it like this. There we go. And whoop. now I don't want this end because I didn't have the, uh, I don't have, oops, there we go. Um, I don't have the rag going all the way to the end and I just don't want it to kink too much. So I just want to make sure that I put my rubber band only where the plastic is and not where there's any, excuse me, only where the plastic is and not where there's any more roving because then I could get a kink in it and we don't want to have a kink in it. So, so that is how you make one side of your pillow. And this is ready to go in the dryer. So you have enough roving left over that you can make a second side and I would say go for it.
Okay, so now we have had this in the dryer for a total of, whew, I think it was 20 minutes. So now we're going to take it out. Ooh, let's see if we can get our knot undone here and uh, see what our piece is looking like. So we're going to open this up. Yep, I think that pantyhose is probably ready to be retired. There we go. We're going to unroll this. As you can see, it's nice and wet. Oh, and we got a little bit of a triangle shape here. It looks like it didn't felt all that evenly. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, there we go. This will happen on occasion, and I will admit I got locked into a telephone call and left it in a little too long. So um, once I dissolve the paper, however, uh, it will be just fine. And we can stretch it a little bit more into position. But as you can see, this is this is perfectly felted. Um, the If I use my fingernail, I cannot scratch off any of the actual fibers. And um, this is the way it should look when it comes out. If you look at the back of it, you can see that the back is nicely wrinkled. It's not overly wrinkled. Um, it's just actually the, the perfect amount. And um, it's still nice and wet. You want it nice and wet. The wetter you actually have it when it's in the dryer uh, and the more agitation you get with the plastic on it, the smoother your felt is going to look when it's done. And as you can see, this here has all nicely felt it into the piece. So this will look very, very different um, once here. Oops, you can see I'm going <laughs> to look at that. Got a nice big puddle of water there. Um, and you can see it's a little rosy in color, and that's okay. You've got to consider that none of this roving is meant to be, you know, sitting in water for these long periods of time, but it's, um, now you can see the piece uh, a little bit better. I don't want to put it back in the water, but you can actually see what it's going to look like. And our next step is going to be to remove the paper. And we're going to do that with boiling water. And once we do that, you will see how we can pull the piece out again and stretch it so that it is a perfect square. Okay, so here we have our tonal pillow. And as you can see, this is dry. We, we actually finished it a few days ago and we haven't gotten to dissolving the paper so we're going to dissolve it today and just so you know even if I waited a couple years I could still dissolve this paper it wouldn't matter and you'd still dissolve it the same way and if I was making a handbag or something out of it I might want to keep the paper on because it makes it stronger but I'm making a pillow I want it a little bit softer so I do want to dissolve the paper and the method I'm going to use on this one is with a big pot of boiling water I've got it here in this roaster oven. I can tell it's boiling the little sides here they're coming up. It's not a roaring boil but it is definitely a boil so the water is hot enough to dissolve the paper. Now once I dip this in you can see how quickly that paper dissolves. See it's already gone down there. So what I'm going to do since the roving is not really color fast in boiling water there really isn't any roving that is I'm not going to leave it in here a long time. I'm just going to dunk it in and I'm going to swish it around a little bit. And you can see there's a little bit of color in here already. Um, I already dunked another piece in here, so it's got a little bit of color, so I don't want to leave it very long at all. Just going to make sure that, oops, don't want to overdo that. And now I'm going to pull it out and put it in my sink. It's nice if you can put your hot boiling water right next to your sink. That way you don't have to worry about carrying it all over the kitchen or burning yourself. If you can't, you can always just stick it in a bowl. And then I'm going to uh, spray this until it gets to a temperature that I can handle it. Here you can see that there, those white bubbles, that's starch. So that I definitely want to get out of my pillow. And it's at a good temperature now, so I can handle it, and I can start squeezing it out like this. I'm not going to wring it, I'm just going to squeeze it 
lean it to make it go out of shape and have it lose its shape. Although with felt, it's easy to put it back into shape. You don't know. Felt will pretty much take the shape that you dry it in. So there we go, and shake it out a little, and I've got my pillow cover with our paper on the back. We've got our red backing on there. So it's a little bit softer, and now I'm just going to roll it up in a towel to remove some of the excess water, and then I'm going to let it dry flat. And then I'm either going to use the second piece that I made out of my kit for the backing and sew it together, or I might just decide to put some other kind of a backing on it and uh, make myself two pillows.